Hello, fellow traders. Tis I, the Rumpled One. Coming to you Friday, September the 18th, the year's 2020. Let's talk trading. It's time for the weekly wrap-up. And as most of you probably know, these videos are for educational purposes only. Your results may differ from mine. Trading is extremely risky. You can lose all of your money. If you need trading, investment, or financial advice, seek the advice of an accredited financial professional. And never lose more on any one particular trade than you're willing to lose on a particular trade. And keep your head in the game. Don't let fear or regret take over. And on the money management side, when you have profit, make sure you take some profit before the market takes it back. For the week, you can see that the pound opened and just went up. And it's up 179 pips at the moment. And it's the week looks like it's going to be an inside bar. And all, let's see, we have one gap that didn't fill the Euro New Zealand dollar. Now, here we look back over the week. We see the first day of the week put in that range for the, or the opening range for the week. Then you see on Tuesday, we popped above it. Wednesday, we went way above it. Thursday, we dipped back in and came back out. And Friday, we opened above it. And so far, we're still above it. So once again, here we have a very simple horizontal line trade that paid off. Speaking of horizontal line trades, the yearly open, anybody taking that cross to the downside was paid, got paid. Inside bar, you can see there was a inside bar on the week five weeks ago, but it looks like we're going to put in a new inside bar um, unless we have a run to the top. Range so far today, Friday, only four pairs over 100 pips. And you can see it looks like we may, let's see, what was yesterday's high? 984, today's high, 992. So it looks like technically we broke out. No, we didn't. Yeah, we broke out of yesterday's high by about a pip. And looking at the buy zone, you can see the pivot point was below the daily open. So we had a short bias. And the first trade, you might have triggered in and either you scratched it or you got stopped. On the second trade, you made it back and then some. And it also, excuse me, also covered the pivot. So now that it's covered the pivot, you can trade both sides of the buy zone. You can see here we had a red candle through the buy zone, pips to be had, green candle, or through the short, the sell zone. But we call the whole thing the buy zone. Should have called it the trade zone, but the buy zone stuck. Anyway, we had a short trigger here, a long trigger, a second long trigger. Uh, this opened below. This op I'm sorry, this opened above, so it was red here. But it opened below here, another trigger to the long side, opened slightly above, so that wasn't a trigger. You can see it popped back in. If you took that trade, you got stopped out, but then there was a there was another short here, pips, here, pips, open below, no trigger, touched it, green, no trigger, unless you're a pro trader and are reading price action. Rat zone. You can see here, we uh, range is definitely large enough at 67. And there were some pips to be had coming out of the rat zone. And if you're trading the rat zone, this is the um, original rat. 
as opposed to the smart rat. So we still have the 20 pips from the current daily high to the short. So any short trade in here is a valid trade. And then just here we've got the current daily low. So any long trade here is a valid rat zone trade. So you can use rat reversals, mid dots, anything. If you want to, you can even use squiggly lines here. And somebody had asked me a question, something about the um, buy zone, whether or not you should trade both ways or should you only trade one way. And so I told him, well, what you can do is if you wanted, you can do buy zone trades in the rat zone and then just be directional. So for example here, um, we had an open here. So we're in the green rat zone. So we take a buy zone trade out of the rat zone. And here we have a um, open inside the rat zone. So you use a buy zone trade and you would take shorts out of the rat zone. So there'd be one there, one there in the buy zone here. Once again, open in the green rat zone. So you could take a long out. So yeah, you can combine the buy zone um, on on the hourly along with the rat zone. So yeah, that's that's a possibility. So I hope I've answered that question for you. Okay. Oh, and if you're wondering about um, what was it here? We also have the smart rat zone. I believe I have that indicator off. But what I can do is I can set that to false. Um, we can, no, I don't want to do that. What I want to do is not shade. And what I need to do here is in the rat zone, I need to change the size of those boxes to one. So what I, and one other thing, I need to change the grid to get rid of that. So right now what I've just done is I put the uh, smart rat zone, I turned it on. So you can see the smart rat zone here is, a, is just below, or as uh, Walmart likes to call it, rat tui. That zone is just before, um, just a couple pips below that 20 range. And here it's about one pip above the uh, 20 range here. So the 20 is still a good rule of thumb. The smart rat, it just gets you a little more precise here, taking those percentiles. And then you can also see how the uh, it has the gauge here. So you know what percentile price is from the um, close minus the low and the high minus the close. So you, you can gauge your trade where you want to start thinking about exiting the trade so that's how that works once again we took out that pivot now and you can see the weekly pivot got taken out and i think i called i usually call these pivot trades at the beginning of the week and that's what we're looking for And you see here, we took out the pivot. Still a couple of missed pivots on the week. And if we shift back to the day, you see that pivot got taken out. We've got a missed pivot sitting here. So we've got three missed pivots this month, two from July and one from March. <laughs> a wick zone, a lot of wick. 
So it's just in and out crossing between the two wicks, only six pips separate it. So a lot of scalping action can be, be had there. And just looking over some of these ranges, you can see here the high minus the previous high is all negative, but the um, previous low minus the low, you see there was a couple of nice breakouts. Got some inside bar action here. So yeah, there was a couple of nice breakouts to the downside here. Three bars ago, two bars ago, or what, no. Two bars ago and three bars ago. And this is just um, a, a Walmart line trade screen here. You can see here's the Walmart lines. Um, you know, we've been talking about the three level ZZ and the mid dots and playing the reversals. Um, usually, um, the way I play it is I look at the ball and then if it crosses that previous mid, mid dot, I'll take the long, um, the way Walmart likes to play it is he likes to see the open above the mid dot. Then he likes to see this high get broken before he enters and they're both valid trades. So once again, each trader has to trade what each trader sees because you see things differently than I do. Back to the simple price action screen. Once again, just taking the trades with the candle color at the line, knowing that the statistics pay off. Now I had a question. Um, so maybe, well, what happened? I don't seem to have that. I thought I'd saved that from the other day. Um, Yesterday, I talked about the uh, statistics on the uh, price action. Oh, I know. I used a different, um, I used a different profile. Let me stop the video and get that profile. Okay, fellow traders, uh, I got the profile back. Um, so I got a question from a, um, trader was asking me um and he's like he was saying this is says uh, only 41 out of 982 bars he goes how, how does that help well you're not understanding how this works um this is 41 bars at the 1600 hour okay so let's just go right now we're at the 1900 hour so 38 bars were greater than or equal to 13 and four were less, okay? So you can see here the minimum was 9.9, uh, .9, the max was uh, 66.7, and the, and the average was 22.5. But we don't, I don't like using averages, okay? I like using the frequency distribution. So I pick a number here, 13. Why 13? Because if it's 13, then that means at least one of these lines are gonna get crossed. So you can look at the range right here, it crossed one line, okay? And so 90% of the time, this is gonna be bigger than 13. So I can see, hey, when it hits this line, let's see, where did it open at? Um, it opened at 48 and it hit 56. So that, that could have been a nice trade. So that's what this means. This 38 isn't against the bars used. This is the 38 plus four or 42 H1 bars that occurred at 1900. So I hope that clears that up. Fellow traders, it's the end of the week, weekly wrap up. I hope you had a profitable week. I hope you have a fun and safe weekend. And when you come back to your trading platform next week, just remember, it's not what you trade, it's how you trade it. So come back and drain the banks. And this is the rumpled one, over and out. Oh, by the way, if you're new here, welcome and click subscribe, click like and share this video. Make it go viral.